Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, August 10th, 2018. It is almost 2.30 Eastern Time as I'm starting this video. This is a market update. Now, for members of the site, um, I've already done one today. In fact, if you're a, a follower of the YouTube channel or on public content on Right Side of the Chart, um, keep in mind this is the first um, public update I've done all week, and the reason is um, general market analysis is typically free content. However, the last few all week I've wrapped in with other things that I'm watching, crude oil, uh, gold, um, some other some other commodities, things out there. So therefore, the, the other previous updates have been uh, restricted content. So if you are a member of the site, there's not much new to add uh, from the other video I did earlier today, although I will cover, I'll, I'll touch on the VIX trade because I threw that out. Um, a fixed swing trade idea I threw that out to the public subscribers about a week or so ago so we'll look at that now all right so if you are uh, watching this market update for the first time since my last public update about a week ago um, what we're looking at here this is the NQ 60 minute chart and in over the last uh, week or so since the previous updates I uh, maintained a bearish bias, although I said my convictions weren't very strong, um, but what I had been monitoring was this uh, second divergent high. We had this divergent high back here uh, that led to this uh, first move down that set up with a bullish divergent low here on NQ as well as the S&P 500 E-mini futures. And um, what I had pointed out is the fact that uh, at this point in time and up until recently, and they we're getting a little more evidence today uh, that I couldn't rule out the, uh, the possibility, uh, and I was still leaning towards that possibility, that this recent bounce with this small divergent low on the 60-minute chart is simply a counter-trend bounce in a much larger wave down. Now, oh, we're down today, but not by that much. So it's, you know, we can't say with certainty, but I will say this, if, you know, my convictions over here weren't as strong the other day but uh, was still leaning towards that possibility after seeing this impulsive move down today somewhat impulsive uh, my convictions are obviously a little bit stronger um, now uh, part of the reason not just because we're going down um, but we have those divergences are clearly confirmed you can see the lower highs in the in the PPO um, referring to the divergent high right here and uh, of course these are support levels so we had when I did the update earlier today we were just above that 74 0450-ish support level on um, the NQ E-minis that we're looking at here, 60-minute chart again. And uh, you can see all the reactions back there. Now we've popped down through there. So if we get a 60-minute close, if we continue to uh, sell off today and close uh, significantly below that level, that means support has been taken out, and that opens a door for additional move down here. And I think at this point, since we've had, a, you know, the market was toppy here, sort of consolidating, grinding around, now we're starting to move down impulsively, and I think that's what will happen if this bearish scenario plays out. And again, uh, uh, targets, possible targets down here. Here's a target zone right there, down to about 72.89. Uh, we had a couple reactions here. That's still a potential target around 72.10. And then uh, we very well may visit this level again. This was my preferred near-term swing target off this divergent high right here. And we hit that to the penny. And that was, again, uh, the top of this basing pattern here that we had in late June, early July. And that was also marked by a lot of reactions and even more reactions since then because we had one here. So that's a pretty significant level. And at this point in time, that's certainly a possibility possibility although there's still a lot of um, a lot of support uh, down along the way so uh, uh, we'll continue to watch how this develops if we have a lot of impulsive selling we smash through these levels here uh, that opens the door for a move down there and let's not forget the bigger picture I'll roll out to that again it, uh, the Nasdaq 100 as well as the NQs right here had divergence negative divergence uh, right here on this recent high on all time frames, this 60 minute chart, which is my near term swing trading time frame, the more important daily time frame, and even the weekly time frame. So we have divergences across the board. And the point is, uh, you know, if this starts to roll over, we start to roll over here, these divergences really start to play out. That has the potential to trigger, possibly trigger some longer term sell signals, also to firm up those divergences out on the more technically significant daily and weekly time frames. By technically significant, I'm talking those are swing trades lasting uh, weeks or even months in some cases when you have sell signals out on those time frames, whereas this is just your swing trading time frame. If you're a quick trader, 
you know, and you're trading NQ or any of the QQQ derivatives and you want to game these little rips and dips off the divergent highs and lows, um, you can, you know, do very well doing that. Um, but if you're a less active trader, a trend trader and uh, or an investor and you either want uh, you know a pretty decent sell signal to to exit your longs or to book some profits or maybe tighten your stops or turn around and short that for a multi-month trade uh, we may we may have those uh, that opportunity soon but again work to be done still on the daily and weekly charts we'll get to that in a second uh, next one up let's look at um, es the s p 500 e-minis uh, similar story there, uh, except we did make a new high since this previous high. So this was the previous high pointed out a few weeks back. Uh, minor trend line right here, and this was the more significant 60-minute uptrend line, both of which were broken, and it played out for a much more muted correction. Again, the the NQ, the Nasdaq 100, and the S&P 500 looked very similar around this point, but what happened because of that big... Uh, uh, sell off in a lot of the market leading fang stocks the nasdaq 100 came all the way down as i pointed out to test that same this this basing range pattern here from late june early july looked almost identical in es and nq but you can see that the s p 500 which is a much more diversified index as defensive issues things that did well didn't have nearly the weighting in those top heavy fang stocks as did the NASDAQ 100. So therefore, we had a much more muted correction in the S&P 500. However, that as well, just because we took out the previous high, does not by all, any means eliminate the chance that this is uh, the initial wave down. Even though this is a new high, sometimes you do make a marginal new high, especially if the divergences remain intact that were there before. So uh, as I said, this is simply an extension of those previous divergences right there. So now we have a larger, more powerful uh, divergent high that does uh, potentially set the stage for a larger drop than this. So uh, we're rolling over. Now the levels to watch, you can see just like uh, on uh, the NASDAQ 100, those NQs, I had a comparable support level here at about 28.33. Uh, we paused on that most of today and we finally broken down below there. So if nothing else, that is an update since the earlier video today. I could add a support level here, which I should do. I just noticed uh, there's some support on the ES right about here. And I'm um, looking at these reactions right here. Reactions, reactions, and uh, pretty much those, those recent reactions. So let's see what happens there. And this is the big level to me. This uh, right here, about 27.98 or so, 97. Uh, why is that so important? Well, we had this multi-month high back here. It's not the all-time high. The S&P 500 so far has reversed just shy of its all-time highs back in January. But uh, after that high was put in, we had a couple sharp corrections. And we rallied up here in, what is that, mid-June. Peaked there, fell back, had a correction again tried at it one more time, failed, finally took it out. We took it out and we back tested it, back tested it, back tested it, and back tested it again. So that to me is a very significant level. Um, I said this in the video earlier today that, I, you know, if I'm, if I were more bullish on the uh, S&P 500 right now in the markets, I would say this is a great time to buy the uh, S&P or the ES has no business testing that again. Why? Because we've already had one, two, three, four, five tests of that level after the breakout. Um, and to see us start to move away and then come all the way back in now, that's unhealthy. Doesn't mean that we can't back test it again if we get there. It just means this. In my opinion, if we start to, if we don't reverse soon, right around that 28, 24 area or so, if we start to get down here, uh, we'll probably get a reaction off it, but I think we could break it. I think that could set the stage for a much more powerful uh, failed breakout, aka bull trap. So we'll see. That hasn't happened yet, um, but if it does, then I think that opens the door for a move down finally to test this um, that uh, top of that trading range back there. And that's all the way down to about 27.44 on ES. And I know a lot of you don't trade the SPY. I mean, I'm sorry, the futures. I mentioned this in the video earlier today, but I do think it makes sense to keep an eye on the charts of the futures, even if you're trading just SPY and QQQ, because you can sometimes pick up on some more uh, reactions, trend lines show a little better because those futures trade virtually around the clock, whereas you're only seeing 9.30 to 4 o'clock Eastern time trades here on SPY and QQQ. 
Uh, so for SPY traders, well, there's a story. We had a divergent high right here at this peak, and we pushed on up. This recent uh, thrust up just simply extended those divergences, just like it did on ES. The level I was uh, the level I was talking about a minute ago that really stands out to me is right here. There was that high where we failed, tried it again finally took it out and remained above it on several tests so uh, that's a level that uh, you know by all accounts if we do get down there really should hold if not this entire trading range up here would be a failed breakout aka bull trap um, because that's a pretty important level and that could again open the door for spy traders here's that uh, late june early july trading range pretty pretty technically significant level in itself for the fact we did base there had a lot of reactions above it had a reaction from above there and we also had a lot of reactions back here so it's not an arbitrary point and that was that t3 zone from this correction which is still you know it could still very much as i was saying before be the same correction just uh we happen to make a marginal new high in the spy but not the nasdaq 100 or qqq so that would be that target zone down there around 20, 274 to about 273 or so and um, let's look at qqq uh 60 minute chart again we're just focused on right now uh so there's the uh similar story really to the um es i'm sorry the nq we had that initial thrust down we pushed back up failed just shy of that previous high so this is still the divergent high and um, although we had on a smaller time frame here, or smaller scale, I should say, we still had negative divergence right here. You can see prices moving up with the indicators lagging behind. That's negative divergence, and so far we're rolling off. So again, is it possible that this is wave one down, wave two up with another wave to come? It's certainly possible, and uh, we will watch these levels each as an if each of these levels down below crack, these support levels, that increases the odds, especially if you start to see and selling really pick up impulsively. Um, but as of now, you know, it's uh, it, it, I still can't say that with a high degree of conviction. Looking at certain things like the trend indicators and everything else, this could just be a pullback. We're quite a bit overbought. So, um, you know, if I have a strong conviction on where we're going, uh, I'll give you that. And if I do have an opinion like I do now, I still lean towards this downside scenario. But again, I don't think it's time to bet the farm on it. Um, and if you're whether you're trading long or short right now, whether you're buying dips on a pullback, because um, as I said, you know, my analysis, regardless of where I think the market's going, I share my thoughts. But what I think you know, I do a good job of is identifying key levels, uh, key support levels resistance trend line levels so if you're bullish and you want to buy dips you know these are levels that you can go long on and the thing is you don't have to become married to a trade put a stop below um, or maybe you have a scaling zone here from 180 all the way down uh, to whatever one whichever one of these levels 177.70 uh, maybe down to test these recent lows and so you scale in long and likewise, if you're, uh, and, and of course with a sh uh, stop somewhat below, likewise, if you're bearish, these are potential price targets and you can either target the quick pullback trade if you think we're gonna go up higher, make a new high, or um, if you were able to short or reshort, maybe you shorted here, or you were able to reshort up here, cover down here like I did, go, I went long and I've been adding short exposure back um, for a while and holding on to that. Uh, so you can then set a stop somewhat below there and allow uh, somewhat above that level, I should say, and or ratchet those stops down if we continue lower and allow for a potential runner trade because that's what we're going to get to here in a second. Uh, look at the daily charts. There it is. Nothing much has changed. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. Um, the points, the things that stand out to me, uh, we had a divergent high here followed by a correction right there. We have a divergent high here uh, in a pretty large divergent high and we have trend line support there and that's a pretty important trend line. And, um, you know, so maybe we hit that trend line, continue up. But if we do take that trend line out, uh, one of the things I'm looking for, and I think they'll probably be tested at some point in 2018 here, is a run at these previous lows that we had back earlier in the year on those first two corrections, um, both in QQQ and SPY. So there's a daily chart that still has the divergences that have the potential for a much deeper correction, maybe all the way down here to about 149. Um, and that weekly chart, again, it shows you every divergent high for the last 10 years that encompasses this entire bull market 
and uh, all these divergent highs had double digit corrections except this one a little tiny little divergent high I tried to include everything here four percent drop but you can see on average you're talking you know well over ten percent on average um, and so why should this time be any different there's your negative divergence right there on the weekly time frame it's not confirmed we need to start moving lower to get a bearish PPO crossover at a lower level than those previous crossovers but uh, that's what you know keeps a potential open uh, that we might it might be more than just another quick pullback trade where you can gain you know a few percentage points maybe 10 percent on on an NQ short and then reverse long um, so as of now we'll watch that and most importantly we'll watch this trend line right here off the mid 2015 lows very well defined in QQQ and if you look at NQ you're going to notice that trend line starts there in early 2016 because this was just a little flash crash that the ETF had the index didn't go that low but either way the index picks up perfectly there and has all these same reactions on that uh, trend line okay and to wrap it up here's that VXX uh, again I covered this a couple weeks ago showing you all these divergent lows these double digit rallies they look to be averaging well over 20 percent um, easily uh, this one 117 percent and so we had a divergent low here 34 percent rally and we had a divergent low here uh, and you simply extend these divergence lines um, they were you know we had a divergent low there I think that's where I pointed out a few weeks ago no big deal um, you know the markets are dynamic and so is my analysis as long as the divergence remains intact which it is if we see here I really have to move that I'm trying to uh, move the PPO line up so you can see how steep the divergences are. This was such a huge peak. What happens when you have a big peak like that in an indicator, it's hard to make out uh, the divergences, and that's why I stretched this up so you can really see. And you can see that PPO curling back up right now. That's a bullish sign there. So a uh, pretty decent move today off that divergent low, about 6.37%. And I still very much think that these targets are a possibility right here, especially that first target there, about 39.10. Um, that's VXX. So we'll wrap it up there. And uh, again, just watch those levels and see if this uh, can can develop into something more than just a mild pullback here. Um, I think we'll know, well, today's Friday. We're not going to know anything till next week. Uh, so I'll try to I'll try to pick up there. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great weekend, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up on YouTube would be appreciated. Thank you.